Hello Reshooters! I've been asked to explain how you could use a substance assets inside Reshift when things are not so easy to understand to be honest. So we're gonna try to get something like this or like that and, and see if we can get a realistic render out of it. Of course C4D does support um, the as an extension the substance engine. Right, so I can just simply drag this asset inside and get some sort of output with the substance based um, standard material from C4D. Which, to be honest, in my opinion, it's um, unfortunately useless because it, it's not the expected output to get from something that's kind of like a glass material with um, with the substance painter workflow so you get some sort of color which clearly isn't the color of such thing you get some sort of reflection which is kind of nothing and kind of a normal which again doesn't look like much this is clearly far from this right and to be honest it's not C for this fault at any any way you look at it, it's not C4D. It's the way the substance has been built, it's not something that by default C4D probably er, or any other uh, render engine will interpret this as, as an, any sort of asset, right? You even have this placement. So um, first things first, we're gonna delete this and I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna start with a ratio material. So create redshift material let's use the old material and because I know it's kind of a glass thingy I'm gonna start with tinted glass and if you're looking at, at this guy it says 15 by 15 by 2 this is the physical side expected size expected so let's do the same thing 15 by 15 by 2 okay and let's focus on that Okay, great. Now, this for me, this looks like a, a tail light for a car, right? Or even a stop uh, um, light. But you know what? Let's see what we can do with it. So, at this point, we have pretty much nothing, right? It's a smooth glass. And of course, glass needs a light. So, don't light. And let's get something that I can use as a light. So, I'm gonna start with something pretty. Um, smooth it's a blurred version of uh, let's see of of this circus backstage right i use this for environment if i need reflection i'm gonna use the high res one so uh, let's start rendering okay well that's fantastic we have nothing and there you go we have some sort of glass okay nothing spectacular about it so Let's see how we can use the um, substance asset to turn it into uh, something really nice. So we need the C4D shader, and by the way, the new node materials do not support substance assets or baking, so you have to use the shader graphs. Okay, so this will be a substance shader. Which one? Well, it will be this one. And you see here we have a lot of outputs diffuse base color see this is what confu is confusing actually c4d you have diffuse and base color normally diffuse and base color is the exact same thing is a diffuse component right the albedo well not in this case we have two components so whoever designed this thing uh, thought about it in a kind of a different way have normal and normal back face whatever that is you have a specular core okay you have glossiness and roughness which are the inverse of each other have a metallic and a height component okay so basically it's kind of like this this is displacement this is metallic if you want to use the Fresnel in metallic mode this is roughness if you want to use glossiness you can use glossiness and this will be the specular color this will be a normal maybe a normal on the back face we don't know yet base color and diffuse is a bit confusing but we're gonna get there right so first things first we decided that this is the what this is the diffuse. Hmm. 
doesn't tell me much diffuse. So I'm going to use the normal first. I'm going to start with the normal. And this is, as expected, the normal output. Fair enough. We need a bump map in tangent space. OK, and we need to make sure that this is, we hope this is in um, raw data. Basically, it should be because the guys that are making this are, they know what they're doing. They're usually not encoding this on as anything but raw data. But you never say never. OK, so we export from here this a texture, a string. We need a texture node that will export the color because the bump map expects a color, not a texture. You can see here there's nothing you can put in there. OK, so this will be in here as a text 0. This goes into the input. And this tangent space goes into bump input. Great. We have something, but it really, really looks odd. OK, it's smooth. It has no detail. Maybe it's the wrong thing, right? I mean, hmm. This looks a bit bright to me. So I'm not so sure if it's right or wrong. I can only expect this to be right. When you load the texture in here, right, you can set a gamma, but it's not the case here. But you can usually set a color space. And you can see here, this is set to auto by default. So whatever input this has, it's set to auto. Now, we can look at this and see what we're outputting. Uh, 256 a bit low. Let's try 512. And we're going probably for the 32 bit. I don't know if this has an option to output what in and any sort of uh, color depth information. Uh, log ratio, random zero, roughness, metallic. I don't see anything that says, hey, you're going to have this in. 32 bit. Oh, I assume this is 32 bit. That's all I can do, right? And if, if that's the case, this will be treated as raw usually. Okay, now normal can be OpenGL or DirectX. We use OpenGL. But you can leave it as it is as DirectX for now. Okay, so this is the front bump map. Interesting. Let's see what changes if you use the back face normal. We should see a change here. OK, oh, this is starting to become interesting. So the whole point of this approach is to use for front facing um, polygons to use one normal map and for back facing to use another normal map. OK, I think we can accommodate this by going here and we go use the normal and this will be the back face normal. And we even have a node that, uh, that's specialized in, in this front and back thingy. That's the ray, uh, ray switch. So we're going to use this for reflection and refraction, reflection front and back, and refraction front and back. OK, we have to enable this for both of them, use front and back use front and back and put that into the bump and lo and behold this starts to be nice you can see compared to compared to to this right you can see that the front is now smooth and just the inside of the geometry it's kind of like this this hexagonal pattern right um, I, I'd say this is a big step forward this is the right direction OK, what else do we have here? Well, we have roughness. OK, let's get roughness. Again, roughness being a float parameter or a scalar has to be row as well, and that's fine. So we get this as reflection roughness. Let's invert these. In case these are not exactly as you would expect them to be, you, we might have to do a bit of 
color space conversion. We can do that through OSL, but we're gonna see. I don't think it's necessary for the moment. So we got these. Um, I'm gonna put these back because everything I'm creating, it will go down here. It will be added to the list of inputs. Okay, so again, we're looking at this, have roughness. What else do we have? Diffuse, we don't care because glass has no diffuse. Base color, okay, that might be something. We have specular, well, and you have glossiness and roughness. We've used roughness, we don't need glossiness. We have metallic and hide. This is a tail light. It doesn't have any metallic component. And we can safely put this into GGX, okay? Because we have already the roughness map, that's fine. If you really, really want to use metallic, you can go into metalness and put that texture as metallic here, right? So you can go crazy with this if you want. Metallic, and yes, use this output as metalness there you go you can see we have map the metalness here okay but to be honest I don't like it so I'm not gonna use it I think this is uh, enough as as glass as it is okay uh, let's continue with that there's a height to be honest I've tested you can try to do this as displacement eh it's not what you want. There's also specular and base color. So if I look at this, right, let's see what we have. We have base color and spec. These are identical, right? I tend to use specular as, let's say, a reflection color. But in this case, I don't want to use it as a reflection color. So this guy will be used actually as transmittance color. So um, let's say specular is this orangey thingy right remember when we set this as a uh, preset transmittance colors it red i'm gonna use that instead so this will be our transmission uh, transmittance color and bam bam thank you ma'am this should work as expected right now you can of course try to put to use height let's let's try that so Anyone that says, hey, you shouldn't have, you should have been used displacement, blah, blah, blah. Let, let's try it. I did, and it kind of fails, like the metallic fails, and this doesn't have enough contrast, enough anything. So um, this will be our height, right? And I can put this as displacement. Okay, I'm not sure if this is 0 0.5 or not I'm gonna assume it's maybe maybe not let's assume it is 0 0.5 at zero level meaning anything that's below 0 0.5 will be negative displacement anything above 0 0.5 will be positive displacement okay but we need this cube to be displaced so let's do render tags or shift object and displacement well you, you can see clearly that this is kind of it, it breaks the normal which is normal right but remember you don't have enough geometry to, to at this point you're just moving vertices around i can put this to 100 and and 100 just to show you it's just pushing a cube into a bigger cube right nothing else no details so let's put this to one and one and come back to it so we need detail right we, we need some sort of detail through the geometry so uh, that means the cube has to have a bit more of these so let's try 20 20 and 2 and you can see it, it starts to to build something but again I looked at this so if you're looking at the the end result for this it's that not much to be honest okay um, because we have no tessellation, so let's increase the tessellation here. Even with tessellation, we don't get much detail, right? And to be honest, the, de the detail is actually inside because the back face has this normal uh, map uh, used for back face, like for retroreflecting or for, for um, 
let's say car lights where you have a smooth out, uh, outside and in, inside you have details that are right, really bouncing the light around so that's what's happening here so I don't think this is this is something you want to play with um, let's assume for a second this is not 0 and 1 is 0 0.5 0 level so uh, the minus 0 0.5 we're gonna offset this and 0 0.5 yeah, okay well it does kind of something but not much and if you're looking at this do you see any jump in in detail no okay let's put this at 100 there's a small jump but I don't to be honest I don't see much detail now the, what you see here is the adaptive uh, tessellation and let's disable uh, tessellation uh, freezing so this is recomputed of course it won't be in real time so it, it will recompute the tessellation every time I'm, I'm moving things around as you can see here right but I still don't see a much much of contrast in, in the whole thing right uh, there's not much I can do about it there's no contrast in here yes you could for instance try to um, color correct this right say hey I need some contrast in here so uh, whatever you have create something for me okay so let's say three eh, there is some contrast but I don't see any detail and again all of this is about detail so at this point I say hey this is not needed okay we don't need this placement so back to what we had this is looking pretty great now this is for flat surfaces right but how about a sphere because remember this is our example and yeah we are we're trying to be somewhere between these two right and this is kind of a uh, not a silly example but it's not what I would expect so much right I don't know how the thickness of this or, or anything so um, let's create a sphere and remember this was 15 so I, I have to put here 7.5 so I get 15, uh, 15 in, in diameter and of course this has a different thickness than the two centimeters that I have in here right so if I put this here it looks a bit different also uh, the mapping is completely different because here you have UV right per face while here it's around the sphere and yes it does look a tad different right so um, okay we can of course uh, have a bit of control for this so I'm gonna create a, a vector maker here which I'm gonna use for tiling everything so um, I'm gonna get this into scale I only need u and v so that's why z is 0 it's a 2d scale okay and that's pretty much our uh, setup so now I can increase this as you can see here and yes it looks totally different on a sphere compared to a flat surface that's why you have this I mean you you can do something like you know five here and two there or well, maybe it's too much two and one or one and two I don't know which one is which this is scaling yeah okay but depending on on how you need this to be it's all about UVs at this point but this is how I would approach it now you can see here there's a tiny little issue and that's to the fact that this is a different color this is kind of washed you see here washed out and maybe this is saturation talking right so okay well we have this but it looks like at least to me that this is not kind of working the way I expect and that's because of the absorption scale right and maybe we have to increase the absorption scale to get it about right okay let's 7.5 half right so yes this is starting to look like what you would expect from from a tail light to look like uh, and yeah you have this you want a different color well probably all you have to do let me just uh, turn a mess into another mess basically because this is very nice but sometimes it's it's hard to read uh, let's optimize this again make it yeah 
so let's spread them a bit as I said it's nice to to uh, lay lay out the graph but sometimes you need a bit of space to read this properly otherwise it can be a tad confusing so to recap we're having two different normal maps which we switch based on the front or back color to get this back uh, refraction if you want and back reflection inside the glass and then you have one shader for the uh, transmittance color and one one shader texture for the roughness but that's the setup as I would use it I did not take test this on anything else but from all these outputs that you get here right I've used half of them so this would be our transmittance color and these would be our normal maps and this would be the roughness metallic didn't work for me height didn't work because well it doesn't have enough uh, detail inside and of course this being a, a texture right a procedural texture yeah you can go here and change things but that's up to you basically from redshift side i'd say this is how you might want to use it of course there are many ways to skin a cat feel free to to come up with your own variation or your own solution it might be completely different in the end if it looks good it is good hope it helps have appreciation cheers